Well, hello everybody. This is Paul. Welcome back to the channel. Um, thought I'd do a quick video. I recently, during a brief quarantine period, when I was waiting for some wonderful COVID-19 test results to come back, I had found myself with some extra time and completed several um, Bowser uh, covered hoppers and I've now got all of my Bowser um, two bay covered hoppers completely done a couple of them weathered but I was going to take a few minutes and go through them and show some of the differences uh, that I've noticed over the last several years between the kit version which would be everything to the left of the two hoppers on the right. Two covered hoppers on the right are both uh, pre-built, ready to ready to roll that I did I got uh, not too long ago. I wanted to just show them in comparison to some of the kit ones. But I'm going to go through them here individually. Okay, this is a uh, kit that I put together at some point in time. Um, this is one of the black ones with white lettering. And I'm going to try to get down a little bit closer. I really like the, the Bowser kits. They're a little bit more um, in-depth, a little more detailed than uh, like uh, an older Athern blue box. And the uh, I think the level of detail definitely shows on them as far as as all the different parts and they take a little bit longer to put together but ultimately I do think they're worth it um, I think these look great in a train smaller cars to me have always been preferable because they make they make the train feel longer especially if you've got tight turns on your layout Okay, this is uh, kit number nine, road number nine zero zero one three three, and this is one that I've added some weathering to to just make it look like it's it's been out and around for a while, and uh, I really think hoppers and covered hoppers look so much nicer when they've got some weathering, unless you're really trying to model it straight out of the uh, straight from the the paint job. This is similar to the one before it. This is road number 900145. Notice I've used a little bit of rust. You can see on the U and H and the first zero and the road number and the one. And I believe the folks that say, you know, go light on the weathering unless you really know what you're doing, which for me, you know, it, it's it's all in the eyes of the beholder, but I'd much rather see a lightly weathered car than one that looks like it's been resurrected from someplace. This is my last of the black ones, uh, road number 900135. It's got some good kind of rusting on the letters. One of the things I really like about the the Bowser so much are the, I like the roof walks. Because even though they're plastic, they really they really look good. And they're very believable. And even though I model an era without roof walks, they had to keep the roof walks on, on cars like this because with, the, with all the hatches up top, you had to be able to walk on them. Okay, starting in with the uh, the gray ones or white ones, however you want to call them, um, with the green lettering. One interesting thing that I've seen is over the years is they've actually, and I don't know if they've done this on purpose, but they've actually changed the color green uh, that they've used for the lettering. These two cars, three one nine zero zero seven and three one nine zero three one 
are similar in their in their um, paint color and the next two I'm going to show you are strikingly darker just to give you an idea the cars that were just being shown were the two in front and I think the batch that I got these from in the rear were a little bit later which I think's a little bit more accurate uh, paint color for the lettering myself I think one of the reasons that I like weathering these up is if you've gotten a little too aggressive with your glue depending on what kind of glue you use I still love using uh, CA for almost everything but, you know, if you go a little heavy on it, you're going to make some boo-boos, which is one of the best things about weathering. You can uh, cover up things like a little too much glue or some part that got broken or some imperfection. Because the weathering just makes it look a little more realistic and lets everybody see what it looks like when it's been around outside for a while. Now here's one with the uh, the more lighter shade of green. This is my last one, but I like I really like what I did on this one. I showed I really caked on some some white powder because if this is carrying cement, if you look here closely, you can see a lot of spillage, and you can tell that I've got a dog above me and a dog here in the room. But you can. Uh, you know, you can see that I've I've simulated some of that spilt cement on the sides as well as on the top. And I really think that makes makes the car look like it's definitely been in use. Okay, and finally we've got these two cars, which I think I'm not sure. I don't think I changed the couplers. I think these came with with uh these metal couplers, I think they're metal. I'm not sure. They look decent enough that I'm probably going to leave them. But you'll really notice a difference in the color of these cars. Let me set one of these these other ones back. And I really think uh, these ready-to-roll ones that they just produced not too long ago, um, I think they look great. I mean, they, they, they really look a little bit more um, realistic in color from what I can remember and the, some of the, the pictures that I can I found in de various books and these are just great cars I mean they're weighted nice this is straight out of the box like I said I haven't done anything to these cars and I think they look fantastic you know the details the details nice just just super cars and uh, Anyways, there you go. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and appreciate you taking the time to check me out. Take care.